Hello everyone, um, I'm back with Phil. It's basically the middle of night. Um, I don't always look this tired, um, but we're just outside Doncaster in Yorkshire. Is it South Yorkshire now? Because they changed the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's South. Yeah. South Yorkshire. And, and we're at Connors Viaduct, or we're about to be. I've only ever seen images of it on the internet and it looks incredible, but I'll let you be the judge of it. to stop meeting like this and then I'll buy the fifth time it's just awkward isn't it so there's a continuation of the track bed you can just make out some some red brick there um that's a bridge but that's not the way we're going this is random isn't it yeah one pretty sleepers just left okay and this way to the viaduct if you can just make that out down there what'd you say that was that Doncaster Sheffield line yeah going into a tunnel underneath there's a big big like kind of Jumbler lines around here, weren't there? I was looking on on rail map, and it's all different colours. Lots going on. Yeah. So we're not far off the viaduct now. Um, so it's not actually a long walk this one, but visually it's amazing. So this was part of the Dern Valley Railway, which joined up the 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 Hull and Barnsley line, which is north of here, down to the Great Northern. So it was kind of like you know a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a joining railway. Opened in 1909, which is relatively late, isn't it? Really, in terms of railway um, yeah. railway uh, building. Yeah. Went in 66, as you know, so many of them did. Pretty sure I can just make it out now, actually. The Great Reveal. This is like um, Alton Towers. That's where you go if you, if, if you, if you, the, if you yeah. bottled it. You don't, don't want to go yeah. on a ride. Here we go. Can you hear that train? It's just coming out the tunnel the other side now. I've got a confession. I heard that. Phil goes, that's the freight train, that's not a sprint of that. So I literally started sprinting and it's in a tunnel, so I can't film it. It's too early, I'm not awake yet. So we're coming up to the end-ish now. So this bit goes over the river, and as Phil was just saying, like I don't know why this bit's. But you find that though, actually, I think it's the it's the same on Benerley when it goes over the railway. Then it's Iron Girder, and I don't know what the thinking is behind that. I think it was a Bradshaw when it went over the canal on Bradshaw line. Right, it's right, actually. It is a bit weird. I never really thought of it, but yeah, it's true. There must be a reason for it, though. Eh? Maybe a good view for the drivers who crosses. Yeah. yeah. It's an amazing viaduct, isn't it? Yeah. Not getting the full gist of it yet. No. It? These walls are a bit high, aren't they? Yeah. Look at these. Uh, they're huge, they're aren't weird, they? Weird, aren't they? And all weird shape. That's not right. That's been put on after, aren't they? They went built look like tanks, don't yeah. they? They do look like Sherman tanks, <laughs> yeah. It's weird. I don't think they're original, are they? Now the concrete precast look. I read the drag the book from the concrete works down there. Look. Right. Oh wow! There you go. There's the River Don. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. And again, look, you can see the castle there. That's a Norman Martin Bailey jobby, I reckon. The birds are just waking up as well, I don't know if you can hear them. Look at that. Beautiful. Give me the countryside feel any day over a city, mate. You make out that shopping trolley. Don't matter where you are in the world, 
there'll be a shopping trolley dumped in a river. This line was, um, it was open to uh, passengers only till about 1951, and then it stayed open into the mid 60s with, with freight. But the interesting thing about this viaduct is it was built using something called the Blondin method, which was basically, it was, it was kind of created in Wales, I think in the slate mines, where rather than kind of, you know, coming up from either end, they would have these huge ropes down from the bottom, I'm guessing from, from that quarry, and they would be bringing up the stone up like that on these huge like, kind of tight ropes. And it's named Blondin, the method, uh, after this guy Charles Blondin, who in Victorian times walked across Niagara Falls on a tightrope. What are you like with heights, Phil? It's not for me, mate. Uh, I'd lean over here without any problem. I'd lean over here, I don't think I'd walk oh, down no, on a tightrope. No, 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 none of this walking was, no. Look at that, so we've walked down underneath it. That is amazing. Wow, what a structure. I know I bang on about it, but the Victorians were just next level, weren't they? I'm mean, saying that, see, no, 1909. All right, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving the Victorians credit they don't deserve. Mind you, they probably designed it, to be fair. There was an act of parliament long, long before that, so we'll give them the credit anyway. The size of it as well. So how many bricks is there? Anyone? <laughs> That's what everyone always says, isn't it? Built with X amount of bricks. I'd say five to seven million. Jeez. You, where to even begin? That's like how many how many pennies can you pile up in a all you can eat Chinese restaurant? No chance of working that out. That's incredible. Beautiful. I do like a viaduct, Phil. I'm a, I'm a fan. It wasn't really a main line either, was it? But they didn't care back then. They just built like incredible structures for anything, really. Bosh. Now they'd say, no, that's not worth it. Though. It's a bit strange though, because there uh, was such a thing like this, occasionally they just put a single line over it to save the hassle, but this one's not, so, double. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Indy Abroad with Carl Pilkington. There's a bit where, where he goes to Petra in Jordan, and you've got obviously the incredible structure, and then opposite it, there's, there's all these caves where these people lived literally in caves. And he's making the point that actually I'd rather not live in Petra, this amazing structure, I'd rather live in one of the caves because if I'm living in a cave, at least I'm looking at that rather than looking in, living in that and looking at a cave. I'm a bit like that here because it was nice being on the viaduct, but it's a lot better being off it. Definitely worth getting up early for this, Phil. Well, still be here if we got here later, I think. <laughs> That's a really good point, to be fair. Yeah, we could have got here in about four hours' time, couldn't we? But where's the fun in that? Apologies for blinding you with the sun, but that's Connorsborough Viaduct. Amazing structure, definitely worth getting out of bed for. I'll turn it around so I'm not blind you. As always, thanks for watching. Midgies everywhere. Um, we'll see you next time. Yeah,